last time with Daniel, we started with the question, why have you invented your own license? And this time we continue by asking the question, what about software patents? So let's start in the awkward end and continue the summer special with Daniel Steinberg of Curl. Uh, there are no patent clauses in the, in the license. So any thoughts on that? Um, patents are, of course, annoying. And I, um, <laughs> uh, I, and I, I stay away as far as possible from all or everything that is patents. <laughs> but you refuse to answer? Uh, <laughs> I actually was once contacted years ago, maybe 20 years ago, by a, an American lawyer because uh, there was one of these, you know, stupid patent cases in the US where someone said, I have a patent for resuming a transfer. So they were suing, uh, you know, 25 big time uh, software companies in the US. And one of them who were sued used curl to resume transfers. But I don't know where it ever happened to that lawsuit. So. And there were prior art for that. Z modem back in the days already did it long before <laughs> this patent. So no, I, I, I really I don't have much to say about patents. We we um, we try to avoid. We, we, I, I, mean, I don't want to infringe any patents, of course. But then I, I don't I don't read up on it. I don't bother myself about them. Mm. No, nobody else is either in the project that I know of. And I suppose nowadays in, in web technologies, most of the things developed are developed in the open without patents. But, but it's, all, it's hard to know, of course. Exactly, yeah. And in, in a lot of the standard bodies that make, produce the protocols and standards, they have mechanisms to make sure that everything that is made into the general protocol is not encumbered with anybody, any known patents, at least. So maybe a couple of questions around the project. So, so you produce these graphs over a number of contributors. How, how many are you now? It's hundreds, isn't it? Or is it uh, in the thousands? We're in the thousands. So uh, contributors to, to Curl, I count anyone who ever basically said anything that went into the, into the project, which means if you reported a bug, you're, you're proposed something that we then did, or you, you reviewed a code or anything. And we're a little bit over 2,200 names in that list i've also <laughs> uh, over the time i've actually i nowadays i also add uh, usernames on github because it's for for a long time i tried to just use people's names but for some reason people like their pseudonyms and weird <laughs> user one two three four on, on github so i nowadays refer to if they don't have any real name their user one two three four on github so yeah we're two uh, 2200 <laughs> contributors and and then we of course count authors in git as well and we're at 811 authors i think oh wow which is yeah. a fascinating amount so we're yeah. over 100 first time committers per year now that's amazing, amazing. how many stars do you have on github <laughs> 17k or so oh cool the, the k made it I was worried. <laughs> 17, I have. <laughs> 17, 17K, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I mean, you've started working with Wolf SSL. Uh, yes. And I guess you spend most of your time on curl. Have, yes. Have you sort of changed anything around the project, or is it just that you code daytime, or are you just off daytime and then code nighttime still? or? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, so now I, I can work, work on curl during work hours and night hours. So yes, I, I spend a lot of time doing curl nowadays. So uh, it, it, oh, yes, I think it has changed things a little bit. Well, first, I can be even more nimble and react to things when it happens, since I work with curl all day anyway. So, so now I can respond to you know, bug reports or things happening even better than before. And mm, of course, it changes a little bit since I'm 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 doing this and I charge customers for curl support, which means that those who pay me, of course, have a priority here. So if if I have problems that a paying customers uh, paying customer is getting, they of course will probably have a higher 
priority than anyone else's, depending a little bit of, on the situation, of course. So, uh, and then I'm also struggling a little bit, and I'm playing. I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm playing and doing a little bit. Of, I have a patch set on top of curl that I call Tiny Curl, which I release under GPL v2 actually, um, and that is, uh, I would say, an attempt to to research the area of, of getting uh, having a different approach to releasing the code especially in in areas where uh, the users are already using um, commercial code or they're accustomed to paying for it because it's more of a way to make them pay for a commercial license or go so with the open one do a well, license that, thing then yes how does that work without a CLA? No, it doesn't. Practice? But I, I'm the only con contributor of that, so that's my code. So yeah, and since the rest is permissive, you can still do it. Yeah, e exactly. Yeah, and I, w I would say that right now it doesn't really work. But uh, <laughs> so I'm still that's uh, <laughs> tried it a little bit, and I might do that even a little bit more for other uh, commercial real-time operating systems and stuff that where the users are already and sort of into an environment where they're paying for every component in their infrastructure anyway. I mean, that sort of makes sense. And then since, since I guess you get fewer code contributors back from such an environment as well. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're, they are small and more, um, well, as I said, this is just some attempts yet. So it's, I haven't really explored it fully or, or learned much from it. But it is also... I struggle uh, with curl since I since okay I sell uh, commercial support for curl but curl is a very mature and old and pretty stable product it's really hard to sell support for a very <laughs> stable <laughs> functioning yeah. product why why would anyone pay for it sort of yeah. that's my response <laughs> that's what I'm getting from almost anyone I talk to sure good idea but we don't need it it just works so i have that's a annoying. question about your think King process because you said you took GPLv2 for tiny curl. Did you think about why not v3 or what was the reason? Uh, um, um, there's there's been some thinking about that, and the, for my primary reason here is to align with other Wolf SSL products. So Wolf SSL uh, as a company, we have we have a whole range of different libraries. They're all. GPL licensed except for curl and uh, uh, so we sell support for all those so I, I was I was just trying to uh, limit the amount of confusion to customers here okay okay learning from past mistakes <laughs> <laughs> hopefully someday I will learn from past mistakes <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I think we've cleared the whole licensing thing so so GPL and uh, and the MPL are broken, so you had to invent your own. But you didn't think you did. <laughs> you think you you thought you were an MIT. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's but I have to say, result of the hackery. But you know, one of this sort of what I really shouldn't tell you, but but was it was a good <laughs> thing with having your own license is that it's some sometimes more notable and easier to find among you know. Uh, here's a product using a bazillion of different open source products. Are they using curl? <laughs> just the fact that it's actually different makes it easier to find curl in the no, 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 please don't, <laughs> don't advertise this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> shittiest reason ever. But, <laughs> or actually, it's not a reason, but it's more of a conclusion that it actually works like yeah. that. <laughs> That's awesome. Way to start a flame but, but warrior one by calling uh, the GPL broken also. <laughs> <laughs> actually the even better way is to actually have my email address in the license that's the that's a better way to do it yeah. <laughs> Just, then people are emailing me about all sorts of weird problems car keys in the <laughs> which they do anyway being able to open the car. yeah yeah and uh, also uh, a lot of car problems actually um, <laughs> speaking of mature and not broken products <laughs> soft green cars <laughs> exactly yeah that seems to be a, a general problem for people well 
I guess just the fact that it's so much software in cars these days, I guess it's inevitable that it's going to be problematic. I always find it amusing. So, so when going to conferences maybe four, five, six years ago, there was this graph showing how many lines of codes are in different products. And the automotive guys showed that the car is more complex than the space shuttle or one of those Boeing Dreamliners. And I mean, the Dreamliner does have software problems. Was it around <laughs> batteries or something? So I mean, it's not something to be proud of that you managed to write something even more complex. <laughs> yeah. But I guess but these days, everything drowns in the Linux uh, um, distros they have now anyway, right? So if you just have one Linux distro somewhere in the car and you have that in the Dreamliner, you had so that, yeah, that's 100 million lines of code anyway. <laughs> And then if you run, if you write 10k or 100k side next to that, there's no difference. <laughs> yeah. So everything will end up with 100 million lines of code. Yeah, that's, that's basically that. <laughs> whatever you do, you will have 100 million lines of code, <laughs> more or less. How many lines of code is is uh, in kernel? Uh, uh, it's a little bit over 160k now. And I have a question from one of our fans. Are, are you considering rewriting it in Rust? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm considering it not. I'm considering not rewriting it in any language at all, other than stick C. Stick to C. We're having this discussion every now and then if we should bump this C limit to from C90 to C99. <laughs> but we've decided to no, not yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> We're not so crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what features in, in, in the more modern C specs do you miss? Uh, I think one of the none. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the one of the sort of, yeah. When you ask me that, it's, well, I'm so used to using C90, so I'm not that used to using the modern features. So what do I miss? I, I don't ever use them really. But I would say naming struct fields when you initial, for example, when you initialize a, a struct on the stack or something, using the names for this for this, that's one thing. Or um, Using dynamic sizes for arrays on, on when you yeah, declare them, and I think those things. Maybe even using C plus plus style slash slash comments. Um, that's at least one of the things that most contributors are uh, running into when they're c contributing patches. I mean, people I, like it, those comments. But, but if, that, if that's one of the top three killer features, that you, <laughs> you tag the comments slightly differently, maybe it's not such a big deal. <laughs> no, but uh, then, um, I mean, C99 isn't that different. Oh, well, declaring variables in, in, within the scope of, I mean, not uh, in fr before the code. I think that is probably one of the top three as well. Mm. So the, uh, the most important question, is it Emacs or is it VI? Is that a question? Of course it's Emacs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Ooh, <Lord. laughs> Burn. <laughs> and of I course, with, how, with no menu bar, no toolbars, and remove everything of that and a bunch of custom key bindings. And, mm. Oh, of course. So it's more and VI like or? The Emacs file is worth <laughs> millions. <laughs> exactly, and my .emacs file has been with me since two decades. Sort of, I don't yeah, barely I remember the details of it. <laughs> I have some commented out things for for .emacs, but I, I'm keeping it just in case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not not lucid .emacs then. Or... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, I got usually students used to ask questions about what editor. If I were to start now, what would you use then? I would probably not go for Emacs, but being as productive as I am in Emacs in some other editor, I don't see that happening. But do you ever use any integrated development environment? Okay, apart from Emacs. No, oh. never. Well. If I'm sort of, if someone forcing me into a corner, I could do it, but then I'm struggling all my way to get out of it and as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> like, like when I do try to do my ports to curl to new real-time operating systems, for example, you know, whenever you get go somewhere new, they all insist on running some fancy Eclipse-based 
weirdo environment for you to set it up everything and you just have to press a button in that GUI to build everything and you have no idea how to reproduce that. So then I, of course, have to struggle my way out of that and get into Emacs again and a big make file instead. <laughs> Yeah, embedded so, systems in these custom Emacs distribution or uh, Eclipse distributions. That's will it ever go away? No, no. It seems to be. I mean, I got a new one just a month, a few months ago. So yeah, that's still sort of what they do. And uh, now I, they I, changed the boot splash. <laughs> that's sort of the takeaway. Yeah, and and uh, and use a new name for the entire thing. Now we have blah blah. What's <laughs> everything is? But everything is Eclipse underneath anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> What compilers uh, are you using? I use uh, GCC and Clang a little bit uh, on and off, different mm -hmm. things. Um, well, I, I, I think I use GCC most more or less daily, but then uh, these days we have a lot of CI jobs for curl. So I so I become a little bit lazy nowadays. I don't uh, usually I don't even run all the tests myself. I just submit a pull request to GitHub and I have. I think we have 85 CI jobs running for every what? pull request. So they, they do a, a fairly good job of you know, torturing, running a bunch of compilers, so all the tools. And we run, I think, seven static code analyzers on every pull request. So <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of tools. Do, do you get any reports from old like HPUX compilers? Oh yeah, we have a we have a Still? Uh, yeah we have a wonderful community of weirdos with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, very often when I submit a new curl release, you know, we do curl releases every eight weeks, and very often the first uh, new binary packages someone provides is for MS DOS and um, VMS. So the, v sort of that just shows you sort of what the. <laughs> They were actually building the late, the bleeding edge curl for these operating <laughs> systems, and I mean they're making sure they work. So they submit submit patches, uh -huh. maybe not specifically for HP UX, but some of those older Unixes are definitely still being used and being people are maintaining curl for those systems. How low do you go? I mean, you you have these. We we spoke about Amigas and Atari's, and and you have a bit of a background there as well, which is fun. Uh, I guess you're a C64 boy in there. You can't run curl, but <laughs> do, <laughs> exactly. Do, do, do you have like 16-bit support for, no. for pointer width or so on? It's no. 32 and up. Uh, it's 32 and up. So from the 68k and onwards. Yes. So early 80s Max. That's where you start. <laughs> <laughs> Mac 9 support. Yeah, I have Mac 9 support. Uh, well, yeah, but uh, when it comes to all those slightly my words, weirdo systems. I mean, we don't verify them in the CIs or anywhere. I don't think we have any automatic builds for them. So maybe we break them every once in a while. So I don't think we, we very rarely actually break a build for a particular platform. We just sort of, if we, nobody I know have it or, or plays with that. So we just leave it and maybe it will, will continue working. Maybe we broke it inadvertently and then Later, someone submits a patch to fix it again. And that's pretty much the way we do it with a lot of these platforms that we can't actually test and try and verify on, on a day-to-day -day basis. But that's a call for ac to action, basically. So someone with a really old 68K-based system should set up a CI node and, and start acting on pull requests. <laughs> right, yeah. But, but you know, these really old systems, uh, they have a problem these days. In, in general, and that's not really curl related, but since everything is TLS these days, you can basically not use a 68K system uh, on the web because it's too slow to do TLS handshakes until the server closes it due to inactivity. So <laughs> you can basically never even connect to them because it takes too long. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure it's sad, but it's more of a statement of how things have developed since. <laughs> the last 40 years or so. I mean, the 68K is still my very favorite CPU. I, it's the last one I was any, well, not shit at writing assembler for. So it's, yeah, it's a, uh, it has a beautiful assembly language, so it's easy to write assembler, yes. And if you look at ARM assembler, that's not even made for humans anymore. It's, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, then talk about x86 or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another day. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, I, I was looking at the tiny curl page here, 
and all the way down on it license it says uh, tiny curl is licensed uh, gpl v3 so oh it says so okay <laughs> then, I, then i was wrong i don't even remember what i said what i did who cares <laughs> <laughs> license license <laughs> Too long ago. I'm too old now. I don't remember anything. <laughs> okay. But that's a good point yeah. to, to, to end that. Who cares about that? <laughs> I don't remember how this yeah. started. Who are you guys? <laughs> how do you pronounce the other project? Is it the heirs or is it cares? Uh, that's a very good question. I, I, I wanted it to be cares. Because, because then, be a, then who cares is even better. Exactly. I wanted it to be like that. So who cares? But uh, I don't know. I, I rarely pronounce it because I, I haven't really made up my mind. And C A R S or something. It's uh, I don't know. Uh, so I just avoid pronouncing it. That's my solution. You, you like ambiguous game names, don't you? I mean, was it C U R L or you know names? Like is you know one of the hardest problems, right? Naming. Uh, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> that's sure where everyone that. starts i need a name and i need a license those are the hard ones and then the code that we know <laughs> <laughs> the code is the easy part awesome but it's been great having you here so uh thank you very much for uh for taking part uh and i hope to see you around some some other time when we bashed you some more <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> it was fun take care and have a nice Bye. summer cheers Bye.